This is going to be a review of the functionality specific to enabling a P2P multiplayer session using Norway. Not Norway, Norway. If you're looking to play with your friends or build a small scale, lightweight P2P multiplayer game, then Norway is a great place to get started. For this video, I'm assuming you already have some basic multiplayer experience. Maybe you've got a game scene and you spawn in some players and you're able to play with your friends on your local network. Or maybe you even have a dedicated server set up somewhere and you're ready to make the jump to P2P. Instead of this being a step-by-step -step video, I'm going to review how the Norway host and client flows work. For my project, this code exists within one script as it pretty much stands on its own. And with some function calls and signals, you can have it wired up into your game in no time. And I'll try to give you some direction on that as we go along. This P2P functionality has been integrated into my 3D multiplayer template so take a look there if you'd like to follow along with your own copy. So what is Norway? Norway consists of three parts. The library that you add to your Godot project, the code we wire up to support the host and client flows, which we're going to look at today, and a standalone application called Norway. This orchestrates the connectivity between players to enable the P2P functionality. You can check out the details on their website linked below. But basically, this uses NAT punch through or acts as a data relay where NAT punch through is unavailable. In order to have your friends actually connect and play from around the world, you'll have to have a Norway instance deployed somewhere on the web. Fortunately, you don't have to worry about that as the maintainer of the library, ElementBound, has provided a deployment that you can use while in development. And if you'd like to know how to launch your own instance, well, I'm going to cover that in the next video. To install Norway, hit the asset lib tab Search for Norway, select Norway, hit download and install. Make sure you go to project, project settings, plugins, and enable the plugin. And it should be good to go. It's also worth noting that even though it's part of the NetFox suite, it does not depend on the core NetFox library. My script is based off the Norway documentation, so I definitely recommend giving that a read. So here's the entirety of the functionality required for the two flows creating a host and joining as a client. Let's start with the ready function. When using this in my game template, this scene, Norway Network, is added to the tree under my network manager when the user has confirmed they want to start a host or join as a client. And of course, when it's added to the tree, this ready function is called. So let's say you want to be a host on the Norway Network. We set up the required signals for the two networking options, NAT punch through, or as a relay. You'll notice that they are connected to the same function. That means regardless of how a client connects to the host, we handle the handshake process in the same way. The handshake process is an important prerequisite to the gameplay connection as it basically informs the routers on each peer a connection between the two is expected. We'll see how this is used once a client attempts to join the game later on in the video. Then create server peer is called. This is the entry point for establishing a host with the Norway instance. In the multiplayer template, I call this from the network manager after the player has selected to host a game. You can see it makes the create server peer call on the current loaded active network node, which in this case is the Norway network. If you wanted to add this to your game, you would call this function and pass in the IP of the Norway instance. The first thing we do is register with Norway. We make a connection using Norway's API to the instance. We then register as a peer which here Norway calls hosts. The registration does three important things. It assigns our peer a unique private ID used to authorize commands, but it is something that you do not want to share with anyone. It provides the peer with a game ID. If we are hosting a game, this is the ID we'll share with others so that they can connect to us. It also registers our local UDP port with the Norway instance so it knows where to route the traffic. As a side note, here I stash a copy of our active game ID so that I can display it later on in the in-game menu. This is something I do in my template to make it easier to share. You're welcome to tackle this process any way you'd like. Once our registration is complete, we then make a call to start the Norway host. This should look familiar as we're just creating an eNet multiplayer peer server. The big difference here is that we provide the local port provided by Norway. Make sure to set the server peer to the multiplayer peer object under the multiplayer APIs. Now we just wait for another player to join the game. Let's take a look at the flow for when a client wants to join the game. Like I said before, when this network scene is added to the tree, we already know the player's intention. In this case, we wish to join a game. 
First, we establish the signals, one for each connection type, nap, punch through, or relay. We'll come back to those in a minute. Then we call the create client peer function. This is the entry point for the client flow. In this multiplayer template, the create client peer function is called from the network manager after a client has decided to join a game. You can see here we make a call to it on the active network node, which in this case is of course the Noray network. If you wanted to use this in your game, this is where you'd pass in the Noray IP and game ID to connect your client to. Remember when I said we stashed the game ID earlier in the hosts flow? This is where it comes in handy, as it makes it easy to share in Discord or wherever you'd prefer to notify people of your game ID. In this client flow, I also stash the game ID in case our NAT connection attempt fails, we can still access it from the relay option. Here our client also registers with Noray, it's the exact same method as our host flow. According to the Noray maintainer, everyone is a host from the Noray's instance point of view. This is a requirement for all peers whether or not they are actually hosting a game. After registration, I then connect my ENET multiplayer peer signals. As I'm assuming at this point we are likely to have a successful connection, you can add them wherever it makes sense for your setup. Then we tell Noray to attempt a connection via NAT punch through with the game ID that we got from our host. Once Noray is ready to proceed, it hits the on connect NAT signal. Then that will call the handle connect function, which performs the handshake to make sure our routers are expecting the connection from the host and vice versa. Once we see a successful handshake, we can then start our ENET client using the provided address port and Noray local port to aid with the NAT traversal strategy. However, if this handshake fails, the handle NAT connect function will then attempt to connect to the Noray instance instead, which will act as a relay of data for our connection to the host. The signal calls to the handle relay connect function, but I'm only doing that to print out a debug statement as we still call the same handle connect function. Whether this is a NAT or relay connection, during the client's handshake attempt, our host signals to on connect NAT or relay will be hit and also attempt to complete the handshake process. You can read more about this in the Noray docs. If this is successful, we can establish our multiplayer peer on the client. And at this point, we have an active connection to our host, whether through NAT punch through or relay, and we can load our player into the game. Now, how you plan on implementing this part depends on how your game is set up. In my game template, the game scene is already loaded on the client behind the scenes. We just show a loading screen. So once a connection is made, the game scene has a node called multiplayer manager, which on a host machine detects when a peer is connected and then we'll spawn the player into the game. Then when the player is ready, I just hide the loading screen. The key takeaway here, and really for any multiplayer setup, is that you need to leverage the multiplayer peer signals to establish your player in the game and set up whatever things they need to be ready to play. The only other thing I'd like to point out is under the Noray network, is that I connect this network server disconnected signal underneath the network manager when the player wants to join as a client. The Noray network script will fire this if it detects that the server or host has disconnected the client, like if the host goes offline or something. And since we don't want the client to just sit there in the game, we want to disconnect them and cleanly remove them from the game. So once this is admitted, back in the network manager script, it hits this disconnect from game script, cleans up everything and puts them back into the main menu. You can handle this part however you'd like. There's probably also some room for improvement with the error handling in these flows, but I think this should be a great starting point. So if you're curious about how things work in my template, I'm gonna just give you a quick overview. The bulk of the functionality to host or join a game is driven from the main menu script. It fields the button presses to host or join a game respectively. If additional options are required, like when using Noray, I show a secondary menu where inputs for the Noray IP and or game ID are provided respectively. Once that secondary menu is submitted, I call to the network manager passing in the collected input data. This then calls to respective host or join game functions, which is where we load in the selected network type. Now that we've reviewed the details of setting up a Noray P2P host or client, Let's take a step back and review the whole process. 
When a player wants to become a host, they input the IP of the Noray application hosted somewhere on the web. We initialize a connection and register with that Noray instance. This generates a private ID for the peer and a game ID that's used to share with others who wish to join the game. This will also set the local port that Noray uses to send and receive data on. We then spawn the player into the game. When someone wants to join the host's game, they input the IP of the Noray instance along with the game ID. The Noray library uses these two parameters to make a connection and register their peer with the remote Noray instance. Next, we attempt to make a connection to the host via NAT punch through. An important part of this process is to make a handshake between the two peers. If successful, our client connects directly to the host machine and our player is spawned into the game. However, if this handshake fails, we instead attempt a handshake and subsequent connection with the Noray instance to set up a relay. Now the peers are connected directly to the Noray instance, which acts as a middleman forwarding data between the host and clients. Generally, a relay is more reliable and should work as a decent fallback option. We looked at the Nori network path today, but this also supports a dedicated server route or local testing using eNet. So if you're interested in getting started with multiplayer or you want to have a P2P setup for your game, you're welcome to clone and check out my 3D multiplayer template. And by the way, it also works with 2D games. I want to give a big thanks to ElementBound, the maintainer of Norway, and the NetFox libraries. He's also made available a Norway instance for testing linked below. I'll also put some links to his merch store if you'd like to support his efforts. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. My next video will cover how to set up your own Norway instance. So stay connected. Thanks for watching.